Today we've got a treat in store. We're going to attempt to fit this monster onto the underside of the van. So this is a toroidal gas tank designed to fit in the wheel well of the van. So this is the gas tank as it arrived. So I'm going to try and explain what I know. This thing is a toroidal shape. It's designed to fit in the spare wheel well underneath a vehicle. This part here, aluminium box, legally it's meant to be a toolless entry, so that's why we have this knob to undo the screw. This is where all the connections are. This is the outlet. Turn it off and on. This is the bit that will connect to all of the gas appliances inside of the van. This bit here is a little sensor. It'll just tell you how full your tank is and it will connect via this cable to a little um, display inside the van. This connection here is how we fill up the tank and I believe this thing is an overpressure valve so that should just let gas out if you fill it up too much. This is the fill up connection that will go on the outside of the van that we will use to fill up the tank at any gas station. We will drill a hole in the side of the van, connect this up to it, and we use this kind of plastic pipe to connect from here onto this connection right here. The next bit is the pigtail and regulator. This is the pigtail it will connect onto the outlet. The next side of the, the pigtail connects onto the gas regulator right here. This is the thing that keeps you safe. It stops all of the gas just scooshing out so it lets it come out in a nice controlled way. From the regulator we will then connect that using copper pipe to our manifold. The manifold allows us to just split the gas line and connect up to different appliances. We've gone for a three tap manifold because we think we'll probably have three gas appliances. Honestly, you can even uh, add more taps onto these things. The, never mind the massive gas tank. Got to watch out for that bag. So one of the considerations to make is that this regulator has to be positioned higher than the tank itself. So because there's usually support beams on the underside of your van, you're going to have a bit of space between the bottom of the support beam that this is pressed against and the underside of your floor. So usually the idea is that you can find a space to attach this thing. Probably a good idea to try and put it in a place where all of the rocks and grime of the world are not going to attack it too much but it has to be ventilated as well. While the tank did come with bolts, they're not going to use, they're not very useful to... I don't know what those bolts are designed for, to attach it to a feather, maybe. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know what we would ever connect the tank to that we would use these bolts, but you know, effort for trying. Yeah, they're barely even big enough to go through the damn feet on the tank. Like, there's, there's no, what is that? But they are useful for us in just lining up where the holes are. Oh yeah, so you can use them to attach the cardboard. Yeah. The plan to line up all of these holes is we're going to hold the tank with a template on it to make sure that we have the tank just where we want it. So hold on, what's the point in having the template if you're going to hold the tank with the template uh -huh. on it? See, that sounds stupid. Aha, uh -huh, it does sound stupid. Yeah. But if you're just using the template, because the underside of the van isn't flat or straight or anything, we want to press the tank into position where we want it to be we then I'm going to tape the template to the underside of the van from that point so that we don't end up with silly problems like curvatures not being met properly and such. We're going to tape, tape the template into position. We'll take the, detach it from the tank, take the tank away so just the template's left in place. From that, we can then mark through the holes where we need to drill. Once we've got holes in the van, We'll then go inside the van with these threaded rods, put them through the drilled holes in the floor and attach them into the tank. I don't trust the threaded rod on its own. The thing's quite honestly a bit bendy, so we really need to have tension holding this in place. 
we're going to thread the bar all the way to the feet and to really secure it we're going to use a nylon locking nut on the underside then working our way up the thread bar we're going to have a washer and a nut pressed against the underside of the van and then on the inside of the van so the top side of the floor we're then going to have <laughs> another washer and another nut if my thumb's the floor if my thumb's the floor we're going to have another washer and another nut pressing down and then I might just to be sure he I might, just loves putting nuts on I might put another lock, nylon locking nut on it just to make sure that thing I never think goes. that's completely unnecessary it probably is unnecessary but I want this thing to never move yeah. the underside of the van okay. has a bar just one of the support beams slightly in the way and the tank is going to press against it uh, let me pretend that this is the support beam under the van. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put. I haven't decided whether I'm using insulation board or polystyrene. But these things actually don't crush. So, they should be able to take the load of this tank pressed against the underside of the van. We're going to put a bit of polystyrene or insulation board between the tank and the support strut on the underside to try and just give us a little bit of space between that support strut and this box so that we can always put this box on. We're going to attach this to the support bar probably with some Sikaflex. One other thing that people like to do with these tanks is spray them with a uh, chip resistant paint and I'm not even entirely sure if it's definitely needed but it's definitely a good idea stones and stuff will hit it and chip the paint and then it will rust so we're going to use a kind of rubberized paint on it that will protect it and keep it good so i think that's us super simple stuff oh gosh so simple yeah <laughs> really easy so that so that's going to go so you can see why it's taken us like three days of staring at it to come up with that plan yeah. and then once that's all installed we're going to get a gas safety officer to come and check it before we actually use the thing. Wish us luck. This space right here is where a spare wheel is intended to go, but this is where the tank is going to be. This is the bar that I was talking about that's in the way. It's only a little bit in the way, so we need to just put a little bit of spacing stuff on it. Um, the bar is not in the way of where the welded feet go. The welded feet should be able to just point straight up through the floor and we can bolt them on the other side. Well, let's see how this goes. Okay. So, I've got this tape here, Jojo. Um, I'm going to want you to have a bit of tape in a minute so that you could uh, basically I'm going to want to attach from the underside of the template which will be easier around the far side for you I'm going to want to put a bit of tape under there just connecting it onto this bar once I've got it all lined up yeah I want you to do the far side The 
next question is, are you content with where the feet seem to be? Does that seem to be okay? Yeah. Good. Just let me give it an extra press. Now, actually, in hindsight, I've realised I can't really move, so if you could come around this side and get the tape around here, then that would also be great. Oh. Where do you want it taped? Here? Yeah. That's not really possible, because this bit's in the way. less faffy ways we could have done that but I'm happy to have done it this way because it's this curvature of the cardboard around the right side here that I always wanted to account for so could you now come along with some more tape I don't really know how, like, how this is supposed to work either. Oh, using that, not the pen. Both. Use that to project, try and get the pin up through it as vertically as possible, and then use the pen uh, to mark around it. See, that's funny, because I don't know why you make such a fuss about where the cardboard is, when this is going to be off anyway. But then we take it to the top side. We'll find out. We don't have anything else. We don't have a white pen.
good thing we've only got one tank, but... So, should we try and hold it up closer to it again and see if they line up still? Again? Yeah. Okay, update. We had to stop filming because the camera ran out of battery because yeah. it got fed up of waiting for us trying to solve problems. So I'll pass you over to Scott and he'll explain where we're at. So the cardboard template idea has been tweaked. In order to get the shape up onto the van, we have had to prop up the tank and we've had to put in some small threaded bars and extend the line towards the floor with those sticks. There. We've marked the positions. We've marked the positions with um, nail varnish. So now we're going to drill some small pilot holes and then we will match up those holes on the inside. You know, talking about all the problems that emerged from tape, apparently tape, any type of tape, doesn't stick to the underside of the van. I don't know if it's because it's dirty or it's cold metal. Tape doesn't stick so we can't stick the template in. Sharpies don't work on the underside of the van. So if you're doing this at home, nail varnish is a much better option. We're now going to drill two really small pilot holes. We can match up the other two with projecting from there. I'm going to use this really old little hand drill. For one, because we want to be able to drill slowly through metal to make it work. Two, it's a hard to reach position. The other drills just don't seem to fit. So. Drill through from underneath. That's all right. I'll zoom in. Do, 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 do. Here and here. Now we're going to match those up with the template and go from there. Pilot hole central. We just uh, checked all the widths of the sharp marks against the spaces between the welded feet on the tank, and they all match up 40 centimeters. So we're doing well. And now that we've got the pilot holes drilled, we're drilling the actual size of holes that we need. And there was one little correction as well. Oh yeah. So this hole to this side here was our projection, but when we measured them all up we realised that this hole here was actually a better position for it. So we just re-drilled it. So it doesn't do any harm to measure twice. Basically. Or 50 times, for that matter. All that's left to do now is put some hammerite on the holes that they've drilled and then have lunch but we'll let it dry. We know it's not much exposed metal, but it is exposed metal. Done. Nice. 
lunchtime. Yeah.